Welcome to our lecture on understanding how hypothesis testing works. In previous lectures about hypothesis testing, we were content to follow a very simple step-by-step -step process that resulted in um, reject the null hypothesis or don't reject the null hypothesis. Everything was very clearly laid out and regimented. In this lecture, what we're trying to do is help you to understand exactly what you're doing when you test a hypothesis and what it means if you reject, if you manage to reject it, and what it means if you don't. In this example, we're going to look at a comparison of men and women and how well they do in terms of leadership aptitude. As you can see from the example, the mean for women was 83.7. This is on a scale that goes from 0 to 100. The mean for the men was 74.3. Of course, we didn't look at all the women and the men in the world. We took a sample of 64 women and 54 men. And you'll, as you'll see in a moment, the difference is 9.4 points. We want to know, is this 9.4 difference significant? Or is it just chance difference? As you can see, we end up with a z-value of 2.97. Okay, now the z is a distribution. We need that to get a probability. Our computed z-value of 2.97, if we're testing at the 05 level, it's a two-tailed test, you need, you need to be greater than 1.96 on the positive side or less than one, minus 1 1.96 on the left tail to reject. Anything between plus 1.96 and minus 1.96, we don't reject. We, in quotes, we accept. Okay, here we got 2.97, which is clearly more than 1.96. So we say we reject HO at a probability of 05. In other words, we have found that men and women are different with regard to leadership aptitude. Okay, let me talk about a straw man, because the null hypothesis is generally a straw man. What is a straw man? We set it up because we're trying to knock it down. We're actually saying, let's pretend that uh, there's no difference between the two groups, in this case, men and women. They're exactly the same. Okay, now we say, let's look at the sample evidence. Is this the kind of sample evidence we should see if there indeed is no difference? So if men and women are exactly the same in leadership ability, should we find a 9.4 difference in the two samples? That's what we found. We found a 9.4 difference. Is that what we expect if there's really no difference? Now, clearly, if we said no difference, we found a difference of, let's say, uh, a quarter of a point. We don't know right away that we can't reject the HO. But here we found the difference of 9.4 points, and that's what we're trying to see. So we start off with a straw man, the null hypothesis. We're pretending right now there's no difference between men and women. Now, is this the sample evidence we should be seeing? Now, uh, if you look at the cumulative Z uh, distribution table, you can see that it gives you the values from 2.97, that's our Z value, we go to infinity. Because we're not only looking at the difference of 9.4 in our sample, what about more than 9.4? So we're actually looking at differences that are more than 9.4, like 10.4, 15.4, 20.4, 30, 50, those clearly would you know, uh, would be more than what we found. So we want to know what is the likelihood of finding this difference if nothing is going on? Again, the straw man is no difference. So we'll look at our sample evidence or something even more extreme. Now we got to do it, we got to double it because we're also looking at a two-tailed test. So we're going to look at that probability. Essentially, what we find is that there's only three chances in a thousand. If there's actually no difference between men and women, getting a difference of 9.4 or greater, again, we're doing it as a two-tailed test, so we're looking at minus 9.4 and less, too. But a difference of nine, an absolute value of 9.4 or greater has only three chances in a thousand of happening if men and women are indeed the same. Okay. So essentially what we're finding is this is not what should be happening. The sample evidence should not be happening if, if the straw man is true, that men and women are the same, that the two groups are the same. This is too big a difference to be chance. So that's what that three chances in a thousand. 
If it had been less than, if it had been uh, seven chances out, out of 100, remember we're using five out of 100 as our criterion? Oh, five, that's our alpha. If it had been like 7%, 10%, 20%, we would not reject. But this is only three chances in a thousand. So we have to just basically shoot down the straw man and reject HO. If you use a computer, the computer simply gives you the p-value, the probability of getting that sample evidence or something more extreme. And then all you have to do is compare it with the alpha. If you look at the p-value, it comes in a printout. You'll see it in Excel and any other computer programs. Um, you could see right away whether you should be rejecting HO or not. So for example, if you're working at an alpha of 05 and the computer prints out a p-value of uh, let's say 0. 0.0003, you know right away to reject alpha. It's telling you the likelihood of getting the sample evidence or something more extreme if the two groups are the same is very unlikely. This is not what, you, this is not what should be happening. That's why we reject HO. So again, if the p-value is less than alpha, so again, if alpha is 05 and you get something less than 05, let's say 0. 0.00002, you're going to reject alpha. The only way to learn statistics is just to do lots and lots of problems. And uh, again, you'll see the methodology is always the same. It's a certain method that we use over and over again. So just keep doing problems. You'll learn this very well. And you'll understand a very important concept. And this is the basic concept you're learning in the inference part of the course. When you take a sample, there has to be some kind of uh, margin of error, the sampling error. Just remember that, that your, your sample statistic, let's say the x bar, is not mu. It's an estimate of mu.